These little blue orchard bees are cutting themselves out of their cocoon and entering into more or less the teenage years of their life. In nature, the bee larvae will spin this silk cocoon and develop in it over winter and then hatch in the spring. And USU researchers from the Spider Silk Lab were introduced to it as a way to expand their work in determining natural ways to replace synthetic and plastic materials. Where are these other materials going to come from? And that's what my lab focuses on is building or designing materials that are inspired by nature. They've started work on this particular project by using growth plates to house the larvae and get fresh silks to test. We use these 3D printed well plates to look inside and just kind of view the bee's life cycle. So this lets us know once we start seeing silk again, we can start isolating those strands. The research team will do some mechanical testing on those strands, testing their strength among other things, but they're also attempting to isolate the specific protein that helps the bee spin these fibers. Once they find that, they'll put it in E. coli bacteria to reproduce the silk. That uh, is more suitable for structural proteins because our concern is to lower the cost so we can make that protein and applications as accessible and viable as possible. So they have some work yet until they're actually able to spin the reproduced fibers, like this one from a hagfish protein. But if they are successful, there are several potential applications for it. They can be in biomedical, they can be in textile, they can be in industry. It can be used for like replacement ligaments, it can be used for sutures. One of the nice things about sutures and silk is that silk is naturally hypoallergenic and so it won't cause a reaction in the patients. That all said, one day you may end up wearing or being healed by reproduced silks from these little bees.